Welcome into the PHNX Coyotes postgame show brought to you by the one and only DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's top rated sportsbook app. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and leave us a five star review. I'm Leah Merrill here with Steve Peters and it was uh, that was an interesting game because it kind of started slow. The Coyotes found their feet late and sent it to overtime. Couldn't get it done. But man. I, I tell you what, I don't know what it is, and, and Nicholas just said it in the chat. I don't know what it is with Karel Vamelka and the Winnipeg Jets. I have, no, I've never seen a goaltender dominate a team like this for an entire season. It's like, so bizarre. It's unbelievable. And that building we talked about before they played there the first game, how they dominate the Arizona teams in that building for a decade since they came back to Winnipeg. It's been complete domination. Until Karel Vamelka came along. And I tell you what, he did it again today. He was outstanding today. Like, unbelievable. Yeah, and he needed to be because he's kind of had a rough go of it um, lately. So, you know, you see Winnipeg on the schedule and think, oh, this is a team he's had success against. But, you know, it's, it, that, that doesn't guarantee anything. So for him to have the game that he did today, I think that was really positive and, and needed. Yeah, and, the, and you know what? Since he signed that new contract, he needed to have a game like this and get it under his belt. I, you know, he needed to to be elite in a game, and I think he was tonight. And, and you know, uh, what better team to put him in against? And it's funny because it felt like this was one of those games, okay, we was waiting for the second period collapse, and I said, oh, okay, maybe it's going to be the third period collapse, and it just never came. And and not only that, you look at this game and the, and the shots on goal, for the Coyotes, Richie with three, Erickson with three, Deneen with four, Michelli with three, Kessel with five, Strawman with three. I mean, multi-shot games by a multitude of players, a lot of defensemen. It was really, really impressive the way their offense woke up a little bit today. And, I, you know, we talk a lot about the line matchups, and we said, oh, well, when they put um, Kalchenyuk with, with Schmaltz and Keller, they kind of fell off. Well, they put Richie with Schmaltz and Keller today. And I tell you what, I sure like that line. I like Nick Ritchie with those two. I think it's a great mix. And the other line I really liked is when they put Barrett Hayton between the two kids and they put him between the two Tucson kids. And I tell you That's what. That's the youth line. Yeah, you put him between Michelli and Carconi. I mean, Beagle started there to start the night, but as the night wore on, they mixed up all their lines mm-hmm. and they put a, a, a group of older veteran players, players together. Um, they put Boyd with, with Kessel and Kraus, but they brought that fourth line with with Barrett, Hayton, Carconi, and Michelli. And I tell you what, a lot of energy. And Michelli was dangerous. I thought he was going to score a couple there tonight. So it was, it was really positive to see that. I hope they keep those guys together going into Edmonton. I'd like to see them kind of stick together, keep those young kids together. So let's hope so. It, it was fun to watch. And and I think I think you will see Nick Ritchie with that group um, going in tomorrow. I'd be really surprised if you didn't. Yeah, what a season um, for Nick Ritchie turning it around. He now has seven goals in 14 games with the Coyotes. So really found his game um, since getting here from Toronto. So love to see that. Also, I appreciate JT in the chat giving us live play-by-play of the I know Canadians the sh- in a shootout. <laughs> I'm trying to watch it on the computer, but I it doesn't give me the update. So I'm just waiting, just sitting okay. here saying well, tied. Yeah, so, we'll so JT, JT will keep us posted. Um, well, let's look at tonight by the numbers because, but it's funny because this by the numbers doesn't fully paint the picture of what happened period by period. Um, so 40 shots by Winnipeg. Once again, Vimelka <laughs> facing 40 plus shots against the Jets um, to the Coyotes 29 shots. But to start out, the Coyotes were outshot immensely, like 26 to, I think, 13 well 25 13 after in the first two periods but that third period they stepped on the gas and outshot the jets 11 to 8 in the third and really turned it on and but that third period and even overtime i mean granted the jets scored and won but they the coyotes had energy they had opportunities that was like the definition of the coyotes finding their footing and getting better as the game went on well they said their offense tonight right and and that was what we've been asking for the last few games when they really struggled to find find shots find the net attack the net i thought they did that a lot better tonight so that was encouraging to see now let's see now i got the shootout going good grief now i'm stuck watching that um (laughs) that's what happens for scoreboard watching but we're doing it in reverse i've never done it this way but anyway um 
so there were positives. And I tell you what, that Michelli kid can really play. I mean, he's got a nose for the net. He's offensive. He gets a, can make plays inside the blue line. Fearless for a guy of his size. Um, yeah, I was really impressed with his game. And I tell you what, since they acquired Richie, I don't know what, what they didn't get from him in Toronto, but he is sure providing everything here in Arizona that you would expect him to do his size. Good grief with that size. Put him between Keller and Schmaltz. I really like that. Yeah, me too. And also Carcone, who just scored his first NHL goal the other night, he had a really good chance in the first period. Um, I noticed him a lot tonight. So I agree with you that that youthful line, it's a lot of fun. Um, so hopefully we get to see more of it because these are the things that we'll have to follow along as we go forward. And this is now the Coyotes' fifth loss in a row. It gets tiring. to. T- I know that's what we want, but it gets tiring to talk about losses again and again and again. But you know, yep. some, some fun stuff. And to... the TSN turning point of this one, Leah, <laughs> was the no goal. Absolutely. That... that changed the whole game. Yeah, 2 nothing. And even you, you just watch the f- – oh, Habs uh, jersey scored. Um, so it's up to the Habs have to score. Montreal has to score to continue the shootout. Um, so the first minute of the game, Winnipeg gets two scoring chances. You go, oh, shit, it's going to be a long night. And then they finally, in the second period, they get that second goal, and you go, oh, okay. Here comes the second period collapse. And you go, wait a minute, there's a challenge. And keep in mind, and I know we were all watching it on TV, Matt McConnell and Tyson Nash are here in Arizona watching it in yeah. Glendale. They, they tied it to go on. They don't keep, like, they don't have access to replays. It's the truck, whatever they send them. So they don't know what they're challenging for. If it's offsides or goalie interference. And all of a sudden you hear they're challenging for puck out of play. Do you know how hard it is to see that little black circle go against a black net against black background of fans? Like it's an unbelievable call. That's a phenomenal call. I've only seen it happen twice um, since the rules been enacted. Uh, impressive. Who do you That's think saw that? Was it? Well, it, I, I want to say it was was Hunter Cherney, the video coach. But yeah. I, I think it might have been. And they don't quote me because it just inside scoop thing. I think it's got to be someone upstairs. So, I mean, they got Corey Schwab on the headset upstairs. That That's so hard to see from in the video room. So somebody must have seen it live. Yeah, um, that was unbelievable. Like when they said they were challenging. And at first I was like, was it an offside? You know, like all the things that go through your head offside, goalie interference, high stick, whatever. And no. And like it, that was such a good call. It completely changed the game. And even – you know, then Richie scores and now it's a tie game instead of a 2-1 game. Yeah. And I know for the sake of the tank, you don't want the extra point in overtime. But for the sake of team morale, I mean, the, yeah. the, it changed the whole game. It does. And it, this oh, is on this road Montreal trip. It's already, lost. And it's already been hard enough on this road trip, right? Like they, the, the travel's been hard. It's 18 God. degrees today in Winnipeg. Do you know it was almost 100 here in Arizona? It's the, the, it was a 74 degree difference between here and Winnipeg. Today. Yeah, I'll I'll be just fine sitting they, here in my backyard. When they're showing the like, you know how they show the city shots on Valley, and it's like people in the snow. It's freaking like April is on Friday, and I but know don't you this. Forget that though. Like yeah. you forget it, right? I know, but oh yeah, yeah. Like That's you've been brutal. through that. I lived in Minnesota. That's what it is. But you I mean, I was born in here. April in Toronto, and there was a snowstorm. Um, yeah, you forget here. Born, We're but... so spoiled. But I know. but so they needed some positivity out of this road trip, and I think they got it. I think, and it's yeah. not just that Vimelka held him in, and he did. He played exceptional. He made some big saves, and it was right from the first twenty seconds when Wheeler had a break and had a chance, and too many odd men rushes against him, and he came up big. All of those things are true, but. For them to battle back offensively, they finished with 29 shots on goal. That's respectable for this mm-hmm. team. Like that's way above their average for shots on goal in a game. Mm-hmm. They were able to get to the net. There are a few that Hellebuck didn't see or just hit him, or he was looking in behind him. So for them to have this kind of little burst of offense, I think was really good on this road trip. So now they can go into Edmonton instead of losing two. They go, okay, I know this isn't a win. They get a point out of a game and their offense woke up. So now tomorrow yeah. night, you go into Edmonton with a little bit of a positive vibe. And I think the other thing is we talked about that shakeup of lines. I'm really curious to see if he keeps those together at the start of the game because I felt as soon as he jumbled up the lines, that's when he got their spark. And so I hope that they, they start the game off tomorrow in Edmonton because when you play the Edmonton Oilers in Edmonton, you better prepare to have some offense because yeah. it could be a shootout for sure back and forth. Do you think... And this is the game we play every time. Do you think they're going to go with Veggie again, given his performance tonight? 
I mean, what time is it? It's it, seven, seven our time. So it's nine o'clock their time. They got to travel to Mountain. God, that's a lot to ask, man. He made 40 saves tonight. It was in a shootout. Common sense would dictate that no, because they're going to have to travel East Coast. Common sense would, would be that they give it to Kojanesh. But, I mean, I've been wrong so many times. <laughs> I would just hate to see. Here's here's the concern: when a goalie plays that many, makes that many saves on a game like this, you worry about putting him in the next night, and now you start thinking about injuries, and that's when they happen. When you're tired and you're overextended and you're not eating and sleeping right, then you get hurt. Now, what would happen if Amelka gets hurt for the last twenty? That where you at? <laughs> so, for me, I know he played well, and he'd love to see him go again. Kojanes gets a start in Edmonton, and you know what? Maybe. I mean, it's first NHL game of the year. Maybe he, maybe that's what he needs. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's the little spark and you go, Oh wow. That's one of those games where a guy plays phenomenal. So who knows? Yeah. Who knows? All right. Well, very early in the program, here's Craig in an outdoor setting. Craig, that's why just, just trying to cut off all the uh, chaos that's happening in my house right now. So you're not outdoors. <laughs> you look outdoors, you know, Anyway. You're not doing an you're not doing an outdoor show show from Winnipeg, Craig. I tell you that much. Thank God. Yeah, yeah. A little warm here right now, buddy. But cool. I know yeah. what happened. Yeah, yeah we just went, it was almost a hundred. I'm going back down tomorrow, so we're all good. Okay. I heard you talking about Veg, and I was surprised to hear Andre after the game say he hadn't committed yet. Hmm. Not only did he make, you know, he made, had 40 shots on goal. He had there were 73 shot attempts in that game by Winnipeg. I, wow. You're gonna get him on a flight, fly back. Clear across Canada and then put him in net tomorrow. I, I just can't see that. It doesn't make any sense to me. You got to get. I, look, I know he hasn't practiced with the team much. You got to get Kojinash in there tomorrow. He's got. I play. think you have to too, Craig. I, I think. And again, you, you got to look at the bigger picture too. I, I mean, there's still 18 games left. Uh, you have to look for the health of your player. I mean, is how important is the win in Edmonton if they're fighting for the last playoff spot on game 82? Yeah, he's got to play. But that's not the case here. Yeah, I, I, it's true. So, and we might as well see what you got in Kojanash, right? Like, let's see who he is. Let's see what he's got. Against Connor McDavid and Leon Dreitzidel? Huh. I mean, yeah. Kojanash isn't going to be around. Yeah. But you, you just can't do that to Veggie. And you guys see, by by the way, were you guys paying attention to that crazy shootout in, in with New Jersey? Yeah, we were getting live yes. updates from the chat. From the chat. <laughs> well, like at pay. least... It, both teams got a point, so yep. the Coyotes are the Montreal still ahead of Arizona. Yep, which is what we wanted. So Gosh, it could have been a better night for the tank if Montreal won and the Coyotes lost in regulation. But we'll take what we can get. Yeah, they like, get their one point. And and Montreal tied it like with 35 seconds left. So and Montreal you. won yesterday in Montreal or against uh, Toronto on yep. Hockey in Canada. So yeah, yep. Well, Craig, we were talking about veggie's success against winnipeg and just how uncanny it is um but so without further ado we'll name carl vimelka our DraftKings king of the game he made 38 saves on 40 shots a 0.95 save percentage and like you mentioned not just the shots face but the shot attempts as well so veggie just crushes it against winnipeg for so for whatever reason but i think the timing of this was good for him. Um, hopefully he'll build some confidence going forward and we can have some closer games like this. I think the way that the Coyotes played as the game went on, that's the kind of play that we hope to see from them in these 17 remaining games in this season. 17? <laughs> wow. Right, buddy. We're closing in. I, I'm glad you mentioned the shot attempts again because people think it's just the shots on gold. That, that's how you measure a goalie's workload. That's not it at all. Uh, there's so much focus in sports science now uh, on load management for goaltenders. And when you're talking about 70, 73 shot attempts in a game, that's a lot of ups and downs, whether it's, you know, going up and down in place or doing the reverse V or whatever he's doing. It's a lot of movement, a lot of strain on the hips and the knees, and the ankles and the groin for a goaltender. I mean, if you, if you really care about load management, there's no way you can put Vimelka in that in that net tomorrow. It'd be insane to me to see him out there. I don't think that serves the player well. I don't think that puts the player in a position to succeed. And not yeah. only that, there's four games this week and there's four games next week. Like there is a 
heavy workload coming up for the Coyotes. They're playing a lot of games and not a lot of days. So that's something to keep in mind too. And without Harry Sateri here that, that you're going to, if you have a day between each game, yeah, I think you're going to see a lot of Karel Vamelka in the upcoming uh, two weeks. So again, it's a day off for me, but Craig, one thing we talked about before you got on, we talked about the um, the coach jump, jumbling the lines up later as the game went on and seeing that young kid with Hayton, the young kid line with Hayton, Michelli, and Carconi, and then put Richie up with Schmalt and Keller. I thought those two lines specifically, wow, I, I thought they looked really good. And I'm curious not only to see who starts in goal tomorrow, but to see if those are the lines he throws out when the game starts tomorrow against Edmonton, because I'd like to see – Nick Rinchy get a little bit of, of Connor McDavid. And, and when you go into Edmonton, when they have the last line change, you better be pretty solid through the middle. And I, it, putting Nick Rinchy in there with Schmoltz and Keller, I think helps with that. Can you keep up with him? Can anybody keep up with him? Yeah, I mean, the answer is no. I mean, Connor McDavid, you, Nick Ritchie can't, but you have to stay above him and make sure you're bumping him and make sure you're in his way and make sure he knows you're on the ice when he's on the ice, that you're, you're physically engaged with the player when he is on the ice. The Brad Richardson approach. All right. And Brad was Brad definitely couldn't keep up with Connor McDavid. No offense, Brad. I'm sure you're listening. He couldn't keep up with Connor McDavid either. <laughs> but Craig, you had the chance to talk with Nick Ritchie tonight. What did he have to say? Well, he's just talking about, you know, he's got seven goals already with the Coyotes in 14 games, I think it is. He's obviously having a lot of success. And, you know, he talked about meshing with his teammates, but some of it is – you get on a little bit of a roll. You have confidence. You get opportunity that maybe you weren't getting, although you, you can't really say that about his situation in Toronto. He was playing on the top line. He just didn't mesh with those guys at all. It's funny. This this league is funny sometimes, the way certain guys seem to mesh with uh, certain players or in certain situations. I mean, you would think that playing with Austin Matthews and Mitchell Marner would be just a godsend for players, but he just was uh, just a duck out of water in that situation. And here he is with the Coyotes filling it up. It's it's cool to see. Yeah, it's very cool to see. And also, PD mentioned the line shuffling. So he got on that line with Schmaltz, who assisted on his goal tonight. And now Schmaltz, that was his 20th point in the month of March, which is an insane yeah. number and something insane to think about. He's also seven away from tying his career high in points and now has 45 points in the 46 games this season. So glad to see Nick Schmaltz continuing his play in March that he's been up to. Yeah. Consistency, right? That's the key. Can he sustain this for the rest of the season and then carry it over into next year? Nick Schmaltz has had moments of brilliance, albeit probably nothing like this because he's a point per game player, but Consistency is the key in the NHL. Can he keep this up as he finally turned a corner and learned how to maximize those elite through the middle of the ice skills that he has? Yeah, and you still want to see him turn it up. A, like You're right, Craig. This is the most consistent he's ever been for this team as far as point production and offensive production. Absolutely. And that's the big question mark. I remember last summer and I was very hard on him that he did not – have that consistency in his game so that point production is there now i want to start seeing let's see him take the next step especially playing with a player like like keller and i, I happen to watch i know your hometown team i watched debrinkat and kane the other night and again those two when they're on the ice together just have this elite chemistry and I, we've seen it at moments with schmaltz and keller let's see him continue and carry that so when those two are on the ice you go oh wow like that's the kind of things I think they can Yeah, the get. duo that like that when you think about duos in the NHL who always have chemistry and one of them is going to get a point every single night. Right. And that's you what you like that to Keller see. and Schmaltz will be part of that conversation going Correct. forward. Exactly. Yeah. I'd like to I feel like Keller had like his super hot streak. Obviously, he had a point streak and now he's kind of been a little bit quieter for me these last couple of games yeah and i don't know you know maybe maybe and i know richie didn't join that line till later in the game maybe you know if they've these have they've had three centers in the last two games galchenyuk played boyd played for a bit and, and now richie um maybe if they can settle in with another settlement here over the next few games that will help i i don't know why they're shying away from the boyd line matchup with those two i don't know I don't yeah know what, i was what, surprised by that too what they're trying to get from that but but maybe that will help Keller. I agree, Leah. He hasn't had that that wow factor that he had, you know, when he was on that Eastern road trip. 
Oh no, Craig. Oh no, Craig. Muted. <laughs> it's the dreaded mute. Uh, are we ever, Jared Hayton between those guys? Are we ever going to see it? Yeah, you know, you've asked for that for a couple of weeks and, and it just hasn't happened yet. I did like Hayton with the young kids, but I'd really like to see what he can do with the big boys. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe, I mean, it's the only sentiment that hasn't played with them. So let's try it. Why yeah. not? I, I, I think, I, you mm -hmm. know what? I think Hayton deserves it. I think Hayton's earned it. I think he's earned a chance to play with those two guys. Yeah. Well, one thing Keller is continuing to do without anything else is being on the Iron Man list, although lower down, but he's on there. But we need to talk about Phil Kessel because he officially took over sole place of number two on the NHL Iron Man list all time. 965 consecutive games played. The streak started on November 3rd, 2009. <laughs> That's like I was in middle school in 2009. Phil Kessel has not missed a game since then um, to take now sole possession of second and Keith Yandel in that first spot, two Coyotes, four more or current Coyotes in those positions. Um, and Keith Yandel also now 988, which if he plays every game this season, he'll hit a thousand before the season ends. So unbelievable achievement for Phil Kessel. Yeah, and not only is he playing, we talked. Craig talked about shots on goal today and shot attempts. He had the most shots by a Coyote tonight with five. There were only there's only one other player on the ice today that had more than five, and that's Ehlers had had eight, and he tied with Kyle Connor with five. So he still has an impact in those games too. And I thought he had an opportunity. And he had he taken every opportunity he has to shoot. One of these has to go in pretty soon for him. Like you think he's going to break through and start getting some of these goals. He's a streaky goal scorer. He needs one to get three. Um, so I hope that first one comes so he can start building on that. Yeah. I just – look, I know I know there are people out there who think that there are games that Phil Gessel should have come out of the lineup. That, that may be the case, to be honest. I know he wants to play. He, he cares. He cares about being in the lineup. But the fact that something didn't happen, even if he's not a physical player, the fact that he didn't pull something to the point where he couldn't play or, you know, hit a rut or just anything that you think of the litany of things that could happen over the course of a game or even in practice to take a guy out of the lineup. The fact that he's been in that many games is just, it's staggering. It's yeah. really staggering. And how about the last two seasons with COVID and yeah, the COVID yeah, protocols yeah. like that alone, like, is he wear a space helmet around when he's on the plane? Like <laughs> how has he been able to keep out this? Even our own Bob heat house, who is sitting at home right now and COVID protocol oh. follows all the rules and Bob's down. And I, Phil, I, I, I know Phil. Phil. Breaking news here. Well, yeah. I know because, and I'll tell you why I did that. Because Bo Matt McConnell talked about Bob Heat House on the air tonight and said he was home under the weather. And some people in our Discord were moderately concerned about Bob. I Bob know. is fine. People Bob's have been like, asking about him. I reached out to Bob and I said, hey, Bob, are, guys are worried. Can we see? He feels fine. He feels good. He's ready to go back to work. He just can't because he's still in the protocol. So everything's fine with Bob Heathouse. But again, he follows all the rules. Bob doesn't leave his hotel room. He doesn't wear his mask all the time. I'm guessing Phil he goes out to eat. And so I, just to be able to get through this without getting ill, without getting hurt, without taking a night that go, Gosh, I feel like I can't. this is part of the Phil legend. This, this it should is. Be Phil Legend that he just skates right through it all and, and he beat doesn't COVID. Care. Yeah, he does get COVID. <laughs> it's like, eh, COVID, no big deal. I got it. I got Still this. got to see the birth of his daughter. Like, just yes. so many things. It's so many stars had to That's align unreal. for this to happen. Like, this does not just happen since 2009. <laughs> really? Like, that's unbelievable. 13 years you don't call in sick for work. Come on. That's a phenomenal. We haven't even, we haven't even done a full coyote season and the the all three, three of us, us have all yep. missed at least oh, one yeah. PHNX Coyote show. Yep. So, yep. <laughs> so we're not Iron Men. That's impressive. A no. little bit more uh, minor. Don't know an arrival date yet, but Harry Sateri's uh, visa has been approved. So, Oh, that's great news. Okay. Right With all direction. these games. Just that's got great that news. news. So, yeah, that's so. great news. Breaking news. Craig Morgan. Mm -hmm. It is. That is good news because he need he's going to have to play like as well as Valmaco is playing. He cannot play the, the last seventeen. He just can't. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, before we move on, did you either of you watch the March Madness games today? PD Kansas still in it. You're picking the Discord in the Discord bracket. 
It's the only team. I have two brackets. I have one team left in the combined <laughs> brackets. It was Kansas. Big win. So I, if they win at all, I think I win the Discord bracket, but I do not win the staff bracket. I'm already out. Wait. Yeah, I'm I'm for sure out Who of that Who doesn't love too. sports this time of year? They got, how do you know? NHL is ramping up. NBA is ramping up. Uh, this is phenomenal. The Suns freaking Suns won are... their like 8,000th game in a row. Like how, how, how it's almost boring for them though. It's like, <laughs> like, what do you, oh, we won again. No big deal. We won again. Like, good grief. They need to get to playoffs. Done. Got to get it done when it counts now. Yep. They gotta got to get to playoffs. Done. That team's got to get to the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. Charles. They've been the top seed in the NBA a couple other times. I, and I'm probably going to beg to be part of the coverage at some point there, but I, I covered the Suns for 10 years and there were a couple times when they finished with the top record in the NBA, obviously, but when they did it once, Michael Jordan was sitting in the Eastern Conference with the Chicago Bulls. They did the other time, Tim Duncan was still with the Spurs and they were in the middle of there. So that's two dynasties that they they still had to face and get through. Um, and, and I don't even want to start talking about 2005 when they got robbed by the NBA and all that. But this year, the way I look at it, and I, look, I, I know Golden State still has some great pieces, but it still feels like the Warriors are in decline. They're not what they were. They're not at the height of their dynasty. This feels like the Suns' best chance ever to win an NBA title. They have been the best team in the league all season. I sure hope they get it done for the Valley. This is a franchise that is so overdue to win an NBA title. Absolutely. Well, if you want to bet, you can bet on the Suns' team futures. You can bet on team awards or individual awards. If you think Booker's MVP, like all of those things, you can bet on on DraftKings also of course, March Madness right now, the final four is set, which is crazy that how fast it goes, but it is. So if you want to bet, you should do so on the DraftKings Sportsbook app. So be sure to sign up using that promo code PHNX when you sign up, bet $200 on any team to win and get $200 in free bets. If they do, if you're an existing customer, you can bet on college hoops with same game parlays, or you can parlay multiple games together. Sometimes when you do parlays, there's bets on the parlay list that you can't just find not in a parlay. So if you want to get a little more creative, you can do that too. So be sure to sign up for the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use the promo code PHNX, bet $5 on any college hoops team to win and get $200 in free bets if they do. That's 21 and over, Arizona only, gambling problem, call 1-800-NEXT-STEP, new customers only, minimum $5 deposit, eligibility, restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for more details. Also, the Suns, the PHNX Suns, dropped a new shirt tonight. I don't know if you guys saw it. Was that number seventeen that they've? Yeah, like, did you yeah. see this one, Craig? It's, I know it's they're like a winning a... team, but like, why the Suns have like ten shirts and the we have? Uh, I'm just saying, who's winning in merch sales? I think they're trying to overcompensate. Uh, I see, I see. I think, I think that's it, it's a pretty numbers. sick shirt. It is. Cool. <laughs> it, it is a very cool shirt. Um, well. Around, not the Coyotes, but in the hockey sphere, I know PD wanted to talk about this, and they also talked about it on the Ballet broadcast, but Pinnacle High School, and PD's wearing his I got my Pinnacle, Pinnacle High School Pioneers, shirt on. which, by the way, Pinnacle is my high school's rival. Like, Horizon and Pinnacle is the rivalry. So, hard for also me the, to cheer for Pinnacle. But. You know, it's home of Spencer Rattler, a quarterback from yes. wherever he's playing next year. is also a Pinnacle Pioneer, and... Uh, the the ginja ninja um uh, it, nico Mannion was also a graduate <laughs> of pinnacle high school so they got some pretty good sports legends playing there at pinnacle high um unfortunately pinnacle did fall tonight to craig's home state illinois high school team is you know it was two nothing late and um stevenson illinois popped in two late ones with uh, four minutes to go to make it four nothing for the final they were, were the shots that I they, they were they were egregious. I wasn't going to mention the shots, Craig, <laughs> but I do have them. The shots ended up fifty three to seventeen. Okay, so, but four only four goals allowed on fifty three shots. Yeah, and it was you two. Can look at two, that. And they will face that Stevenson Illinois team, which is a really good hockey team. Will face Shattuck St. Mary's, and heard of people them? who follow hockey might have heard of Shattuck St. Mary's. Yeah. Um, so the, um, and, you know what? and we'll show the photo too because great photo. All of them look like Shane with their bleach blonde hair and roots and, showing. And, 
uh, Tony Silva's son, he's the equipment manager, one of the equipment manager there is on a Coyotes. His son is, is a part of that team and scored a big goal to get them into the corner finals and overtime. But the bigger thing of this for me, and, and you see the picture of those, all of those kids, those kids could be in Boston. They could be in Minneapolis. They could be in Moose Jaw. They could be in Winnipeg. They look like hockey players. And I don't give a shit that they're from Arizona. They're hockey players. And I tell you what, the the people that say that hockey doesn't belong or exist here are just flat out wrong. Here's a team that you've battled through 16 teams in the country from all over coast to coast, ends up in the final four against hockey rich markets and competes proud of them. And then you watch the NCAA final four today. I know Craig had his eye on that today and you watch the Minnesota golden Gophers go on to the mm-hmm. final four who scores their first goal. Matthew, Matthew nice. nice from Arizona. So you know, I get frustrated when this is a hockey market. I'm sorry. It's not a huge hockey market and it's not Minneapolis. I get it. It's not Michigan. It's not Boston. Get it. But there are really deep hockey roots here. And this should be an indication that, hey, hockey belongs here. So I, I'm really proud of all the people that, that were participated across the country. We talked about the, the Kachinas next week. There's three teams competing for nationals from Arizona. And you might say, oh, you know, they had to beat teams from all over the West to get there. California, Colorado, it's a big deal. So they're heading to nationals next week and we're going to talk about them next weekend. So it's a, it's a really big weekend for Arizona hockey kids and hockey players. And, and I'm, I'm just proud to be a heart of part of the hockey community here in Arizona. Well said, did you, PD. Did you guys get to watch any of the frozen or not the frozen four, but the NCAA men's hockey tournament? By I the did way? not. Just briefly, Craig. Man, Michigan looks scary. Michigan yeah, it's going to be a good team. All those, NHL All those draft picks in but the they first talked about that. But they talked about that from the beginning of the season, that this was going to be the elite team in college hockey in Michigan with all their high draft picks. Um, yeah, they get through Quinnipiac tonight um, with an empty net goal to, to ice it, but there's some really good hockey teams playing in that Final Four. Uh, the Frozen Four, I'm sorry. Is it's... And uh, Minnesota State, Nathan Smith, is now mm-hmm. a name that Coyotes fans are familiar with, so – a few Coyotes names to keep your eye on and Arizona names. So, well, they play Maybe. each other head to head. Minnesota, Minnesota State. So you'll see yep. um, Nathan Smith and Matthew Nye's head to head next. Is it next week, Craig? They play next uh, Thursday, yeah. Saturday. Yeah, or they play on the seventh, uh, and then the championship is on the ninth. Okay. And Mich- Michigan plays Denver in the other game. Michigan has twelve goals in two NCAA tournament games. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's something else to follow, and that's what we talk about hockey this time of year, and you watch the playoff races around the NHL, and that's why they, we go back to the Coyotes briefly. This is this Winnipeg team is competing for a, a playoff spot. Like they're still, they're still sniffing around that last wild card. So for the Coyotes to compete with them, and tonight it's not just the goalie. The Coyotes played with them, especially in the third period. So the Coyotes competing with a team that's trying to get their way into the playoffs. So that should be a tip of the hat to the, to the coaching staff and to the players of the Coyotes. Absolutely. Well, we talked about already what we think might happen with the goalie situation tomorrow, but looking ahead on the second night of a back-to-back on a brutal travel schedule in Canada, the Edmonton Oilers tomorrow, they're third in the Pacific, 6-3-1 and one in their last 10, 20-12 at home. This is what the Coyotes are going to face tomorrow. What are your thoughts projections for this game tomorrow and what will be the keys we'll do a little preview oh, of some keys now for tomorrow's game go ahead pd with your pre-key Wait, this is the biggest thing about playing the edmonton Oilers is you have to stay on top of their speed what does that mean you need players between your goalie and their key players which is McDavid and Drysaddle, and I don't care if you're in the offensive zone trying to score your third forward high meaning you better be ready to defend Connor McDavid's on the ice. You better know he's there and you better be above him. I don't care if you're in the offense, the neutral zone or the defensive zone. You better be around Connor McDavid because he will make you look silly. Now, converse, if you can keep him off the score sheet, you have a chance to win because you look at their record when he gets a point and when he doesn't, it's dramatically different. So key number one, two and three, when, when, when I worked there was control Connor McDavid, stay above Connor McDavid, control their speed. D, have to be careful on pinching on the blue line, which tees Petey's puck talk. That's going to be the topic 
next week is pinching on the blue line. Can't do that because it gives up too many odd man rushes against, and you better be good between the blue lines. No turning the puck over. You do those things, you have a chance to win because this is a team that gives up goals just as easily as they score them. So if you get to the net like they did tonight, you will see a game that's going to be 4-3, 5-4, 6-4. That can happen against these Edmonton Oilers. Man, you look at the uh, Western Conference playoff race right now. There, a lot of teams have crept back into this. I mean, it's, it's helped that some of the teams up there haven't played as well lately. But like, if I'm looking at teams that are a lock right now in the Western Conference, you got Colorado, Pro- Calgary, and probably Minnesota. Aside from that, who's a lock right now? It's crazy when you look at the standings. Minnesota, yeah. by the way, winning against uh, Colorado in overtime for their sixth straight. Yep. Yeah, they're on fire right now. And the trade deadline, we talked about this with the addition of Marc-Andre Fleury. He not only helps them in net because he's won before, he is a huge addition in that locker room. And it's binding that team even closer together than they already were. They could be dangerous here. I'm, I'm wondering what's going to happen with this Minnesota team. They're going to be the fun one to watch. But St. Louis, who is third right now in the Central, they've got Nashville nipping at their heels. Dallas isn't too far behind. You're right, Craig. There is nothing cemented in the West except for those three. Even L.A., you know, they're, they're not safe from getting caught from either Edmonton or potentially Vegas. Like, there's a lot to be settled. How about Vegas down 3 nothing? to Chicago yesterday. Thank you. That's where I thought you were going when you were talking about the Blackhawks, by the way. I thought you were going to chirp me. I thought I'd have to get my yeah. No, but can you, like, and I, I don't know. like Brutal. Three nothing. Three nothing. I mean, it was it was three three in a heartbeat, too, by the way, when the third period started. Just yeah. Blackhawks are just awful. But that Vegas team, we'll see, Craig. We're, we're still, they're still going to have to juggle the salary. But Dodonov, yeah. Dodonov not doesn't get traded. He gets the game winner. They go, oh, they, come on. Right. That, that, like, you that, can't, that sounds like the plot line of like so it's a sports the Mighty movie. Ducks, Mighty Ducks yeah. five, the Dadanov story. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I know they feel good about the fact that they came back and won that game, but they had to rally against a really bad team at home to win that game. Uh, I, I would not feel comfortable yet if I were Vegas, especially with all the teams in the mix right here. And by the way, Nashville won tonight, so they jumped St. Louis. St. Louis is down into a wild card spot as well. It's it's like a constant shuffle in the West right now for those bottom five spots. It's it's going to be a great race. I don't know if the playoffs are, you know, I don't I don't know how many contenders there actually are in the West, but it could be a good playoff for that reason as well with some of these teams just being so close to one another. And I think that's something we're going to have to keep a close eye on as our show continues over the next, you know, few weeks writing up to the the end of the season well we're going to talk coyote hockey for sure we're going to talk prospects getting ready to the ping pong ball drop and we're going to keep an eye on these playoffs because the east is set the west is not they're they're i'm still looking forward to that vegas colorado first match when they bring everybody back from the ltir for vegas and they go oh by the way we're all healthy now we're fine (laughs) yeah and there's no like video on all of them as a team together because they haven't been (laughs) yeah how do you play them you don't even know how do you scout that team you're right they they're all on in the ltir that's a tough might be the last year you can do that right because they're talking about that at the uh, gm meetings yeah it's got to change it has to change it's ridiculous you can't be like 19 million whatever it is over the cap in the playoffs it's just silly yeah that's there'll be two years in a row that's going to be an egregious amount over the cap now if 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 vegas makes it like you said they they, right. they still right. have to make it and i think their big key is going to be get laner back like their goaltending has been average at best and i know logan thompson is a guy they hope to be their future he's he's struggling a little bit right now and they need robin laner back in if they want to make a push to make the playoffs and do well throughout those playoffs so we'll keep an eye on all of those storylines but for the coyotes it's just <laughs> we're watching the tankathon we're watching the tank and we're watching the future and we will be talking about prospects again um, later this week on an audio episode. So keep your eyes out for that one. Um, Craig, what do you have coming out this week at gophnx.com? Oh, I don't want to give this one away yet. I got a little surprise for Monday. Dive Ooh. I'm going to dive into the past. So I've got that. We'll, t- we'll keep an eye on the, uh, the tank standings because they're getting really interesting. Um, so, but uh, yeah, I don't want to give away what I what I've got coming. Wow, to okay. if that's not a tease to get a. If that's not a tease to get a membership right now, I don't know what is. 
Uh, Absolutely. Well, be sure to become a member at gophnx.com so you can get access to Craig's stories. There's a lot of great stuff coming. Um, also, Craig does prospect reports monthly also. So um, you can read. There's so many ways to consume kind of content, but read Craig's stories. They're excellent. Also, members get weekly deals on merchandise. And right now it's buy one, get one half off Coyotes merch in the PHNX locker. So check that out. And I mentioned the new Sun shirts. Amazing. You should add that to your cart as well. But we also have our exciting merch drop that we still can't talk about, but I can't wait till we do because I know Craig has stuff to say about it, but you'll be excited about it as well. And join our members only discord where it seems like PD is going to win the discord bracket. But I also Not like easy. the, the easy. comment earlier from Charles that he won the, the tank of battle of <laughs> the, the discord bracket. So oh, wow. awesome. Yeah. Um, anyway, we are scheduled this week. We have another show tomorrow, the Oilers Coyotes post game show. What even is our schedule this week? Now that I don't I'm... know. It's dinner. It's Leah's dinner night. Oh yeah, tomorrow. and I'm getting that. dinner tomorrow. I believe Monday, Monday so Wednesday, Thursday. Is it? Is that last game Friday? Friday. Yep. There when, there's a game Wednesday audio episode Thursday on. We can Prospect. say what that is. We we're can gonna, say. Yeah, we're gonna have uh, prospect uh, former GM in the league. Uh, Craig Button's going to join the show. We're going to talk about the top prospects in this year's draft and the draft itself. So that'll be a good episode on Thursday. Absolutely. When I think about prospects, I think about Craig Button. So I'm really excited to hear what he has to say. And then, of course, our post game show on Friday. So that's our schedule this week. Be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Leave us a review so you don't miss anything. And subscribe to PHNX Sports on YouTube as well. Hit the notification bell. And I think that's it from all of us. We will see you all back here live on the PHNX Sports YouTube channel tomorrow night. Follow us on Twitter at PHNX underscore Coyotes. Also, if you know anyone who wants to adopt a dog right now, mm. check out our feed because Craig and Michaela are spotlighting dogs at the shelter who have been there for way too long and they are precious dogs who need loving homes. So if you know someone who is wanting to adopt a dog, send them to the page next coyotes Twitter feed and check out those videos. Cause a lot of dogs need homes. So we'll see yeah, everyone county feed, right? You can go to the County website as yeah, well. That too. Literally all of the dogs available. Yeah, definitely. So check that out. Thanks all for watching. We'll be back tomorrow night and have a great rest of your Sunday. Um.